Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's uh, question comes to us from John Roberts. Let's see if he gives his call sign. Yes, W3LJ, and he's an ARRL Life member, and so congratulations for him. He's looking for a way to create a cheap power supply that not only provides power, good power, to his uh, VHF home station radio, but also um, can provide power in emergencies. Now this is what the VHF radio often looks like. This one right here is a uh, any tone of 578 uh, right here and they're all about the same form factor. And uh, if you're just going to do 25 watts, uh, you can, or even 50 watts, you can do it with a 10 amp uh, power supply. Um, if you're going to do the 80 watt version, which I really recommend against, you're just blasting everyone else out of the way, um, you should uh, uh, then get a 20 amp power supply. Okay? Now, can you use the power supply that is. Um, you're using for your HF radio? The answer is likely yes, because that power supply is being used on an either or basis. You're transmitting only on one of them. If you have an HF radio, it's probably a modern HF radio that's basically a computer with an antenna. You have um, about 23, 24 amps on transmit and about two to three amps on receive. Two to three amps is a very small amount on receive. Your VHF radio on receive is going to be drawing one to two amps and then on transmit about 10. If you don't transmit on both at the same time you're fine with the same power supply because it's quite rare that you would transmit on both at the same time. Okay so you can do that. But what he wants to do, let me show you here, this is kind of interesting. So he's got this idea that he's going to use a little uh, 12 amp hour uh, battery okay and I've got one of those I'll show you right here this battery back here is exactly that battery the same battery uh, it's a Duracell 8 amp hour uh, the one he's got here is 12 amp hours. This is an absorbed glass mat battery. It's a very nice little battery. will last a very long time. The battery is very much like this battery. Will it run a mobile radio for a while? Yes, it will. Um, now, here's what he's doing to keep it charged. This is a solar charge connector, okay, which is not a constant, but a solar. Okay, and you can check the different types of inputs and so on. Now the normal input for 12 volts, uh, 12 volt, think of that as the class that we're working in here. We're not working with 24, we're working with 12 volts. Okay, the, the um, solar panel will put out an open circuit voltage will be about 18 to 21 volts. Okay, the closed circuit current uh, will run whatever it is, 10, you know, 5 amps or something like that. This is what actually depends on the size of the thing right here. But note the voltage input, okay? There's a couple reasons for the extra little cells that are in these things, and that is to provide enough of a difference between the input voltage and the output voltage, which is whatever goes into the battery. Now note that what this does, this uh, connected to a solar panel, like a 50 watt or a 25 watt solar panel, uh, right here, nominal 12 volt, but again, it'll have this open current voltage, or open circuit voltage of 18 to 21 volts. Uh, you connect the battery first, Okay, that's these middle two right here. And then you connect the solar panel over here. Always connect the battery first because that will promptly bring this down to the battery voltage. What this will do is charge up the battery 
uh, there's three kinds of charge. Uh, the bulk charge, uh, which it cycles through every day, the bulk charge will take it up to 14 point uh, uh, four volts for a flooded lead acid and 14.1 for a uh, AGM like this. You have to tell it what type of battery you're dealing with. If you're dealing with um, lithium ion, uh, that, that's all different. Okay, and then the uh, floating charge, uh, uh, I'm sorry, then there's the so-called adsorption You'd think that'd be done with a B, but it's not. It's a P. The adsorption phase, or, uh, absorption phase, where it will stay at 14.1 volts until the current comes way down. Um, and then it will keep it at about 13.3 volts. This amount varies from controller to controller, you know, and you can set it for what you want, 13.3 volts. Note that 13.3 volts will not charge a battery. Uh, it just keeps it from discharging, self-discharging. This is what charges the battery. So you need something that can be like 18 here, 14.1 out. Now the power supply that he has selected here is uh, a 14, uh, let's see, it's a $14 uh, let's see, he doesn't say what the power, what the voltage is. Uh, 14 volts. This is a 14 volt uh, battery. I'm just looking at that right there that shows uh, what that is. 14 volts. You're going to lose at least one or two transistor drops coming through here. So that's like one volt. You're down to 13 volts. This is too low a voltage. If you want to use this constantly, uh, get something that's a 16 to 18 volts, okay, coming into here. This is, I would assume, a pulse width controller, and it's going to uh, keep that battery nicely charged, and it will take it through the appropriate uh, phases of charging. What I'd really recommend instead of this is a solar panel. Uh, get yourself 12 volt, uh, about 50 watts is plenty. That's not a real big solar panel. You can pick these up for maybe, if you go to the right place, look around for maybe $60, something like that. And you're actually on solar power. And you will charge that battery faster than you can discharge it. So you'll have uh, good things going. For a long time. By the way, I ordered one of these. They're only ten dollars. I ordered one of these, and we'll review it when I get here. I want to see how well the thing actually works, uh, and see what kinds of features has on it. One of the nice features would be to charge a lithium-ion battery, which takes a higher charging voltage. Although the 18 for that is just fine. Does very well. Okay. Now this normally would be your load out here. But what normally you do is you've got the charge controller, the charge controller coming to the battery, you know, with its uh, minus plus. And then that goes to the load directly from the battery, not from here, because this will be limited to a certain number of amps, and you may want to go uh, beyond that. Okay, so. John, I hope that helps answer your question. Uh, what you are proposing will work, but you need a higher voltage than 14 volts. 15, 16, 17, even 18 volts would be better. 21 would be a little too high. A lot of laptop batteries these days are 21. Keep it uh, under around 18 or so. Now recognize that the um, laptop battery charger is a um, switching power supply and so it might create a lot of current. Note also that there's going to be switching going on in the solar charge controller and you could get some very rapid switching in there and that could create an issue uh, again uh, with noise. If I were you, I'd go after the uh, solar panel. He currently uses this battery for 
his mobile station at home, so that would work. So you've got some very good ideas in here. Uh, the only thing I would say you have to do is get a higher voltage um, voltage source to go into here. This is expecting um, kind of 18 as a minimum uh, because there are some pass transistors in here. And each one of those pass transistors has a voltage drop across it, which is why a 12 volt battery has um, a usual uh, output of around 18 volts. And this cuts that down to what's needed here. This will almost certainly be the kind of charge controller that turns on the current for a little while, then turns it off, then turns it on, then turns it off. We call that pulse width modulation, okay? And hence the switching transients. And this power supply needs to be able to handle the fact that its load is on or off, on or off, on or off, and that can actually be turned on and off quite rapidly. So there you go. All right, um, before uh, we finish up, I just want to say thank you to Jim Simmons for be being our newest patron on patreon.com. You too can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. Or for more options, go to decastler.com slash support. And until we next meet, 73.